you're a really busy person. You're on the go. You're on the move all the time. The last thing you want to think about is the fact that you're eating unhealthy on top of that. You know what I'm saying? Even if you're working out or you're not working out, a good diet is a good diet. And I don't really push like, oh, you got to work out. You got to do this. You got to do that. Da, da, da. But I think it's more so about a lifestyle thing, you know, and it's just more so about what's important to you and just making sure that your body is functioning the way that it should. And you just feel better when you're working out and you're eating the way that you should. But it's just something about a good diet that is just completely irreplaceable. Do you know what I mean? Like there, there's literally nothing else that you can do ever in your life that will replace a good diet. It just isn't going to happen. Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different aside from all the meal preps that I've been doing. I wanted to actually talk with you guys face to face, uh, more so about like diet, right? And specific to uh, women who are nursing. So that is something that I have been obsessed with researching lately to find out what are the safest things for a, um, you know, a new mommy to have. So I wanted to be able to uh, research these items and put them together, compile everything, put it in a video and share it with you guys. So that way you guys have pretty much the what, what's what on the uh, more so appropriate or recommended diet. Okay, so if you guys really wanna learn about the appropriate diet that a new mom, a new nursing mom should have, make sure you stay tuned make sure you watch all the way to the end so you get all of the information all of the goods straight from myself and you guys go ahead and do me a favor please go ahead and like this video go ahead and subscribe to the channel and after the video feel free to leave me a thoughtful comment if you guys have any questions or anything like that please do not hesitate to shoot me a dm on instagram i would love to hear from you guys i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to start off by talking about one of my favorite things in the entire food group which is protein right so protein is basically for me I feel like it's everything and one of the proteins that I love the most and it's the healthiest and it's actually the most versatile is chicken right chicken can be great for anything chicken is even in breakfast it's in lunch it's in dinner it's even in like like not a snack but like a small meal so you can do so much with it so with chicken I prefer to have my chicken grilled I have grilled it stovetop. I've grilled it outside on the grill. I've also had it baked, broiled, blackened, any way but fried, right? And so even though I, from time to time, I do indulge in a little bit of fried chicken, I do not make a habit of eating fried foods in general. So like French fries, fried chicken, that kind of stuff, it's, it's just not very healthy, right? So you don't want to put all that stuff in your body because you have to also keep in mind, nursing mom, that because you are nursing, you're going to be passing all this stuff down to your newborn. And that's definitely something you don't want to do. So even though fried foods are really not the worst of the worst, you do want to keep that in mind. So for me, I just don't eat a ton of fried foods um, more than like twice a week. I really try to limit that. And I limit that by doing a lot of my own meal preps because I'm finding that whenever I do meal preps, it's like I'm setting myself up for success. I can't speak today, I'm sorry, but I'm setting myself up for success, right? So when I do my meal preps, it's like I already know what I'm gonna eat, I know how much of it I'm gonna eat, so not only is it like the food is prepared, but the amount of food is prepared for me. So all I have to do is just basically go in the fridge, grab that container, pop it in the oven, and nuke it for a little while. And before I know it, I have lunch. And being that I have such a fussy newborn, I love my child, but she is fussy, okay? But being that I have a fussy newborn, it really helps for me to do meal prep like either the weekend before or the night before or something like that because I can't be coming in the kitchen and cooking a full course meal because I got to send to her. Because whenever she's down, she could be down for an hour or she could be down for only 15 minutes. And... Unless I'm making eggs or something, I can't really cook a full meal in 15 minutes. That's just not going to happen. Even now as I'm filming, I got an ear out because I'm like listening for her. So if you hear a baby crying in the background, I'm probably going to cut because I'm going to be like, um, yeah, I'll be right back. So I'm even having to like film this video like in segments, which is just so freaking hilarious. 
But um, you know what? You got to do what you got to do because as a new mom, you have to like make things work as you can. And um, so that's one thing that I'm really, really learning. So back to what we were talking about, back to the chicken. Basically, I like my chicken as lunch or dinner. And I tend to be a creature of habit too. So I will have like sometimes the same thing every day and maybe I might change it up for the weekend. That's something that I've, I've always been a creature of habit, but especially when I was doing the bodybuilding competition of like many moons ago, it wasn't so hard for me to have the same thing to eat five days a week and then changing it up a little bit on the weekends just because it, it kind of worked. I, I, I felt like I was already doing that on a routine basis. So it, it didn't affect me that much. Like I said, chicken is my favorite. Grilled chicken is just like so bomb. I love to have it on the grill outside. So whenever the weather is right and we are good to go, I like to be able to maybe put a little marinade, put some, you know, low sodium seasoning on it and just set it up on the grill. And the good thing about the grill is too, if you know what you're doing with it, you can actually do your entire meal prep on the grill, have your food ready for the week in about 30 to 40 minutes depending on what you're making and how much of it you're making. So it's not even like you have to come in here and you gotta bang around pots and pans. You can be out there and the best thing of all is whenever you're grilling outside, you don't have to worry about washing any pots and pans. It's mostly foil and maybe uh, some, some Tupperware or something like that. But you pretty much have it all together and that's one of the things I used to love about the grill. And then you have that good smoky flavor and if you add any extra uh, marinade seasonings or any like wood chips for extra flavor and a boost, it just makes it all the more better. You know, and then you kind of feel like you're like a top chef or something, you're like a grill master. It just becomes that much more exciting. So then you get to really plan your meals the way that you want it. And you get to just, it just, you feel good. You're like, dang, okay. You know, when lunch comes around the next day, you get excited because you're like, oh, I really took the time to prepare this and I prepared it the way I wanted it. It was like full gourmet. So now I know I'm about to have a bomb lunch, right? I don't know about y'all, but I get super excited when I make my own lunch and then I'm getting ready to open it up. And I was like, oh yeah, I cooked the other night. Oh, okay, we about to go in. Now we're gonna change it from the chicken and we're gonna bring in something else. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about one of my other favorite sources of protein, which is salmon. Now, particularly with salmon and um, nursing mothers, that is, um, that's, you can't really have that, or it's not advised that you have that as much. So as much as I love salmon and I can eat salmon almost every day, it's just not recommended that you eat salmon more than probably about, maybe twice a week, maybe three times, but twice a week has been sort of like the universal um, concept that I've understood from different sources. So my rule of thumb is no more than two times a week salmon. And it's usually just a, like a good um, one serving size. So for me, four ounces is about a good serving size. So I don't have that more than twice a week because of the fact that I'm nursing. It's just specific seafoods that are just not safe for baby. So rule of thumb is if it wasn't good for you when you were pregnant, it's not going to be good for you when you're nursing because all that stuff can still be passed down through your breast milk. And you just want to make sure that there are certain foods that, you know, if you can't, if you're not really supposed to have them that many times a week, try to have it that, you know, that amount that's recommended or less. So right now we don't have any salmon in the house, so it doesn't really affect me. But when we do have salmon in the house and I am still nursing, rule of thumb is no more than twice a week. And just as a really cool idea as well, um, salmon can also go on the grill. What I've done personally is I love my soyaki marinade from Trader Joe's. I put it in a video so long ago when I did a grocery haul. Uh, comment below if you guys want me to do a brand new grocery haul so I can give you guys the actual goods and the full information on great um, items that you can pick up from the grocery store. But for this particular grocery haul, I went to Trader Joe's and I got a soyaki marinade, which is like so bomb. And I love to use it as either a dipping sauce or a marinade for my meats. For my salmon in particular, I get a full filet from the grocery store. I go ahead and season it up, make it nice and sexy, wrap it in foil, put it on the grill outside for anywhere about half an hour, maybe a little bit longer. It just depends on the size of the filet. But my rule of thumb is it's done when it's nice and crispy around the edges of the uh, actual meat, uh, meaty part. It's just nice and crispy and it'll be nice and 
and just tender on the inside. Salmon is pretty pink, but you know, I don't want it to be too, too pink. So I cook it a little bit longer. So I think about, I don't know what size this is. This is, I don't know how long, how big this is, but roughly about this big. I don't know. Uh, about this big or maybe even just a little bit bigger I'd say 25 to 30 minutes but usually when I see that crisp around the edges that to me lets me know that it's done if you're not sure stick a fork in it figure it out once it's pretty much done that's when I go ahead and rub my marinade or I'll brush my marinade on it and it's just absolutely amazing it's just like you can't get any better than that with a well-seasoned filet of fish and with that soyaki marinade it's just like heaven and if you want you can put it over rice drizzle a little bit of that sauce over the rice and you know what, steam up some vegetables and you got yourself a full course meal. And that would make for a really great meal prep as well. Now, I love my chicken, I love my fish, but I also love turkey. I feel like I don't hear too much about that in the meal prep world. I always hear about chicken, 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 chicken. And even though chicken is really great, fish is awesome because fish is nice and lean. I think there's nothing wrong with turkey every once in a while too, because I feel like you not only get that protein, but you get that fat too. Because Turkey does have that, it's particularly ground turkey that is like, um, what is it? It's, it's, I think it's like 85% lean, I believe. Um, so 85% lean, for example, you can get that from the grocery store. I picked that up from uh, Walmart. You can find it in, I'm in Tallahassee, so we have a Fresh for Less. So I pick it up at Fresh for Less. And Publix would also have the 85%. And I've seen, seen the 93% lean as well. So if you want something that's a little bit more of a leaner cut, leaner meat, you can feel free to go for that 93%. And that'll be even better for you. For me particularly, because I'm breastfeeding, I want to get all my calories in. So I keep the diet as clean as I can, but I try to take in all of my calories. Because I do have to have a higher calorie count since I do require more energy um, to be expended because I am breastfeeding. So I'm having to think about that. So because I am breastfeeding, I not only take that in, but I also need to drink uh, a lot more water because I need to uh, make sure that I have uh, more volume in my system and in my blood. I need to be able to pass that on. When I was pregnant, I did drink a ton of water. And so I definitely am continuing that same uh, routine. That's something that I feel honestly is just should just be a lifestyle thing you should just never give up drinking a ton of water and now that we have talked about the proteins um we are going to move on to talking about the vegetables now i believe that a great balanced diet incorporates vegetables of all different colors right i think that it's important to know that you can do things like green leafy vegetables which are recommended that are full of vitamins and nutrients that your body needs in order to function correctly and it's really great in weight loss and it specifically the green leafy vegetables are awesome because they have tons of fiber and fiber is really great for your system it's great for digestion and you can pass all of that stuff through right to which water and fiber come together and they aid in weight loss so that's something that is super super important and I feel like tends some people tend to kind of overlook it but you know what it's just one of those things you just got to do what you got to do and you don't have to do spinach if you don't like spinach there's kale you can do greens um there are let's see let's see what else is like green and leafy this isn't so much leafy but you can also do asparagus i think asparagus is a really great option to do as well if you're not a fan of asparagus the green beans is an option um but do not do not deny all the other colors because cauliflower is important as well squash is really great don't forget about your tomatoes don't forget about your mushrooms vegetables are just as important so that's something that you just do not want to do without so as it pertains to your diet just keep in mind that vegetables are just as, as important as protein or just as, as, as important as fat what the heck is wrong with me today i feel like i cannot talk so we're going to move on to fats they can be a part of a snack if you want if you want to use um like a fatty snack to be incorporated in your diet or full-on meals so for example salmon for example that has a certain level of fat that would be incorporated in a meal because of its salmon right but then you have things that could be incorporated as a snack which is like peanut butter and peanut butter is a really good uh healthy fat that you can have as long as you don't overdo it i believe avocado is a fruit but i keep classifying it as a vegetable <laughs> but i will say i really do like avocado um i think that's a really great snack as well but we're gonna move on 
if you are confused about any of that stuff, just make sure you read the back of like your nutritional label. It'll let you know about your serving sizes and those types of things. But everything will be contingent upon your goals as well. So if you have a specific goal that you don't want to have so many, you know, so much amount of fat, you know, a day or a week or whatever the situation is, it really is contingent upon that. So you want to make sure you keep that in mind because at the end of the day, I really hate that phrase, but I'm using it. So at the end of the day, everything is contingent upon what your goals are. So if, for example, um, you don't really want to take in that much fat, you can just dumb down a little bit of the fatty foods that you eat. And I'm not talking about necessarily unhealthy fatty foods, but also healthy fats. So if you don't want to have as much healthy fats in a day, if you have a whole avocado as a snack, maybe have half, you know, or maybe have the half of avocado in a salad with just like lettuce and tomato or something. I mean, that is a sort of a meal, but it could be, if it's a small salad and half an avocado, that could be counted as a small meal, like a small snack. Um, that's totally doable. But as it pertains to like uh, healthy fats, you know, it could also be contingent upon your macros. If you're a person that tracks your calories and you want to know exactly what you're putting in your body, how much of each thing you're getting, then you can do that too. But peanut butter is one of my favorite fats. So I just have to put that in there. That definitely, definitely has to go in there. One of the snacks I really like to make with peanut butter is a peanut butter and banana sandwich. So for example, you can make it as healthy as you want, but if you really want to make it healthy, you can get the Ezekiel 4-9 bread. It's literally called Ezekiel 4-9, like the Bible verse. And um, what you can do is get two slices of that. That is like a lower carb, high protein bread that you can get pretty much from any grocery store. I've seen them in Trader Joe's and I've seen them in Publix. I believe I've seen them in Walmart too, but definitely Trader Joe's and Publix. In Trader Joe's, the last time I saw them, they were on a shelf. They were on a shelf, but in Publix, they're in the freezer section. So around the frozen breads and stuff like that. So just keep that in mind. They'll be in different spots in different grocery stores. But it is a lower carb, high protein bread. It's uh, healthier for you. They have different versions of them, like the low sodium, cinnamon raisin, multigrain, um, something about a sprout grain or something like that. Baby's crying. Okay, real quick. But what I like to do is take both of those. I like to toast them, uh, just lightly toasted. And then I like to spread a little bit of peanut butter, like all natural peanut butter or low sodium, whatever peanut butter on there. I like to slice up half of a banana and I like to drizzle some, drizzle some honey on that too. That makes for a really great snack. It's super filling. You got your proteins, your carbs, and your fats all in one snack. And it's something that's super addictive, but the catch here, which I love about this particular small meal, is that it really curbs your appetite for something sweet. So even though you have everything there right in front of you, that honestly, in my opinion, it really just, it, it just makes you, like if you have a sweet tooth or something like that, you can put that thing together. It would take you about five minutes to put it together. And you don't want anything sweet after you have that because that drizzle of honey does it, the sweet and salty from the peanut butter, the, sugar, the natural sugars that come from the banana. And then if you, if you go a step further and then you get the Ezekiel 4-9 cinnamon raisin bread, that will definitely do it for you. So if you have a sweet tooth just like me, that will do it, no muss, no fuss. I feel like nuts would definitely make the list. I'm finding that almonds are actually a really great, great, fatty snack that you can incorporate in your diet you can just literally just grab a handful and that will be enough I believe like 16 almonds is like a, a serving size I could be wrong it's been a minute since I've had almonds but a good handful and I don't mean like a handful with this big of a pile on top I'm talking about just like a little handful just something you can pop in your mouth or whatever it's just a really great snack if you don't like almonds walnuts are really good too but almonds just tend to have more of a nutritional value in my opinion than walnuts so I do walnuts, but I do them sparingly. So for example, if I wanted to have like a nice little meal and I wanted to incorporate walnuts because I maybe am sick of almonds and I want to change it up, I might do walnuts in like a salad or I might do walnuts in like a parfait type of situation, right? So those are just some ideas for you in case you might not, you know, be well versed in that or, or really have an idea as to how to, you know, put those things together. Okay, so now that I'm back, Sorry about that. 
baby was crying, had to go tend to her. Now that I'm back, um, so I believe I left off on talking about like healthy fats, right? Of course, peanut butter is my favorite. Avocado is another thing, love avocado. If you really wanna have a quick snack, um, what you could do is slice up an avocado in half, or you could eat a whole one, but if you do eat that whole one, make sure it's a small avocado, not the super large ones. Uh, but a small avocado you can do half or you can do a whole and you could just put a little bit of seasoning in there drop a little bit of olive oil in there and maybe drizzle a little bit of um, lemon juice and with avocados they are more satisfying than a lot of other snacks which is really cool because you really don't need a lot of it in order for you to um, be satiated so that's one of my favorite things to do whenever i have avocados and i'm like i don't know if i want this i don't know if i want that but you know what i know that avocado will do the trick I'll actually do like a half an avocado and or I'll do like avocado toast. That's also a really great option as well. And with the avocado toast, I'll do like a whole wheat or multigrain bread. And what I'll do is I'll just toast it for a little bit. Then go ahead and spread my avocado. I don't like mushy avocado. I guess unless you're having guacamole. But for me, I like it a little bit harder and I can just go ahead and chop it up a little bit. So that way it's like not creamy, but it's just a little bit more choppy. And when I chop it up real small and then spread it, it makes for a really great spread because I don't feel like it'll make my bread soggy. So I put that on. I'll put a little bit of complete seasoning on over that. Then I will go ahead and dice up some tomato and put some, or slice up tomato and put the tomato on that. And two pieces of toast made that way, two pieces of avocado toast, it actually does wonders. It like, it just, honestly, it just makes my day because I'm like, Okay, now I'm full. I have my carbs, my proteins, my fats. It's just a really quick little thing. It's also great for a post-workout meal. So if you're looking for something for a post-workout meal, that will be your that should be your go-to because it's it's bomb. Trust me. So a really great idea also for breakfast that I have been doing. I've been pulling a little bit from the fridge, so I just like to go in there, pull what I need, get in, get out, and you know be done. I'm not trying to like spend all day trying to figure out hmm. What do I want for breakfast? What do I want for lunch? What do I want for dinner? No, that is the whole purpose in meal prepping. That is the whole purpose in getting together items so that way I can just pull from the fridge when I need to pull from it. I don't need to be trying to take forever combining things or trying to figure out something to cook or whatever. Cause like, nah, we, we don't need that. What I like to do is I like to get um, like Greek yogurt. And I know a lot of people really don't like Greek yogurt cause it kind of tastes like sour cream, but I love Greek yogurt. So a good Greek yogurt, I like to actually, and y'all please don't judge me, okay? Please don't judge me because it's going to sound really, really crazy. But I like to actually dump an entire packet of Quaker Instant Oatmeal, the flavor kind, into uh, my oatmeal, oh, excuse me, into my yogurt. So if like, let's say for example, I have like plain Jane Greek vanilla yogurt, what I'll do is I'll pop like a pouch of that peach Quaker Instant Oatmeal. I'll dump the whole packet in there and then I'll just stir it around in there and that kind of becomes my little breakfast parfait. I might pair that with like um, an apple or a banana or something like that and believe it or not, that is like everything for me. It's like I actually look forward to my breakfast in the mornings because that's what I'm getting. Sorry, it's getting a little bit darker outside so you guys will notice that the lighting has changed just a bit but it's definitely getting shady out there so that's what that is. So yeah, so now the light is coming back out so the lighting is changing again. But anyway, that's actually one of my go-to breakfasts is the Greek yogurt with a pack, an entire pack of Quaker Instant Oatmeal, the flavored kind, and then paired with a piece of fruit. That's a really great breakfast. It's quick and easy. If you're a person that's like on the go or if you're a new mom and you're like the, the baby's driving you crazy, but you just want something to put in your stomach, then you can just quickly go in, go in your cabinet, go in your fridge and grab it and go. If you want, you can put nuts in it or you can do... Um, you can do like a drizzle of honey or something like that just to kind of like sweeten it up a little bit if Greek yogurt is really not your thing. I just tend to go with Greek yogurt because it's a little bit healthier and has more protein than some of the other yogurts that are out there. And I don't think it really has as much sugar content. I could be wrong, but anyway, again, that's my go-to. Usually for lunch, I will do like uh, whatever it is that I prepped from the weekend before. So I will link up some videos above so that way you guys can take a look at some of the meal preps that I've done most recently. So if you guys need an idea on what it is that you want to prep for your lunch, your dinner, or what have you, this will give you some really great ideas and some extra tips on how to make sure that you 
are um, just thinking ahead, you know? So I think it's really great for a person who is either trying to lose weight, maintain, maybe gain muscle mass, um, things of that nature. But take a look above uh, at the videos and you guys will, I think it'll give you some really great ideas on what you can do in order to like um, get your meal prep game on point. You know what I'm saying? And if you have any suggestions as well on meal preps, any recipes, any different ideas like that, feel free to leave it in the comment on that video. I'm always checking my comments and I'm always responding. So you guys, you know what to do. I'm not even going to repeat myself on that one. I think a great idea for dinner too is to just keep it as light as possible. You're getting ready to go to sleep soon. So a few hours before you go to sleep, just make sure to keep it nice, light, and healthy. You want something that's going to make sure, uh, keep you content, but you don't need to get full, right? Because we ain't trying to do all that. We ain't trying to be going to bed and we tubby because that's just not the move. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have something light like a salad. What I like to do is I like to do like a chicken salad. And I might do like a chicken salad. I might uh, chop up a little bit of a boiled egg in there just for variation. Keep it interesting, right? I might do something like um, some cranberries. I might do like a little bit of strawberries or something like that just to keep it nice and fresh. And I like to keep the dressing light as well. So I tend to steer away from the ranch. I don't want to do the ranch too much because that is very fattening. It is very rich in flavor. I do like ranch, but I like Italian too. So I'll go with like a low fat Italian dressing. Or if I want to keep it really, really low fat, I will do either balsamic vinaigrette or I will do a combination of olive oil and um, vinegar. I know it sounds really, really crazy, but I guarantee you it's really not that bad. You're a really busy person. You're on the go. You're on the move all the time. The last thing you want to think about is the fact that you're eating unhealthy on top of that. You know what I'm saying? Even if you're working out or you're not working out, a good diet is a good diet. And I don't really push like, oh, you got to work out. You got to do this. You got to do that. Da, da, da. But I think it's more so about a lifestyle thing, you know, and it's just more so about what's important to you and just making sure that your body is functioning the way that it should. And you just feel better when you're working out and you're eating the way that you should. But it's just something about a good diet that is just completely irreplaceable. Do you know what I mean? Like there, there's literally nothing else that you can do ever in your life that will replace a good diet. It just isn't going to happen. Some really healthy carbs that have been staples in my diet have been brown rice and sweet potatoes specifically. I really, really like those two in my diet. I feel like those are just... I don't know those are just something that I've really come to love do you know what I mean you can really play with it as much as you'd like and you can change things up in your diet you know according to your taste according to your goals but for me I just tend to stick with what I know and like I said earlier I am a creature of habit so I've been doing brown rice and I've been doing sweet potatoes so those are what I know specifically work with my body and my diet and I like those I'm gonna stick to those I like to do my sweet potatoes mainly steamed. I steam them in the microwave. I can do it in the oven, but I prefer to go between either the microwave or I'll actually grill my sweet potatoes out on the outside grill. And that's actually really cool. And as a snack, what you could do is I grill them out on the, um, on the outside grill and I cut them up into like three inch discs. And it's amazing with like the smokiness of the grill, the sweetness of the sweet potato. It just all comes together and it just makes for an amazing, amazing, amazing meal. I've done like ground turkey, I've done avocado or like a little guacamole um, mix. And then I've done like a sweet potato mash. Sounds a little bit weird, you know, like just hearing it like, okay, how does that come together? But honestly, when I took a scoop of like the turkey, the sweet potato mash and the avocado and I put it in my mouth, I'm not gonna lie. It was like a mouthgasm. It was everything. I was like, I don't think that my mouth had so many different flavors in it all at the same time. And I really didn't know what to make of it. I just knew that I like this and this is gonna be a go-to meal. I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna incorporate it, but maybe I could do something like turkey tacos or something with sliced avocado in it and sweet potato mash on the side. I'm not sure. I'm just kind of thinking of things as they come but that's basically what it was. I just realized like I really talk with my hands. I'm like all up in here. I'm putting my hands all up in y'all's face, but I mean, that's just what I do. So please bear with me because you guys are probably gonna be distracted because I'm all over here with it. Sorry, I don't really have like a lot of carbs for y'all, but I'm like, those are just my staples. I don't know what anybody else does because that's just what I do. But 
yeah, these are like, these are, these are things that I actually eat. And so I'm like, listen, these things have helped me and they're still helping me. Like I used to have, eat these things constantly, like round the clock, six meals a day type of thing when I was training for my fitness competition. And now that I am nursing a newborn, it's just interesting how these things have just sort of stayed with me. And so I'm like, I know these things work, so all I have to do is just go back to the basics. Also, one of the biggest things I wanna talk about is the water intake. Water intake is so super important. There are so many benefits to drinking a good amount of water each day that is just absolutely just beneficial for your health and for your daily living. You know what I mean? Like just your daily functioning and those types of things. So. I, I steer clear of like telling people that they need to drink eight glasses of water a day. Don't even listen to the hype, okay? Anybody say, oh, drink eight, eight glasses of water a day, whatever. I ain't even trying to hear all that. That's not accurate because everybody is different. So that doesn't work for everybody. My thing is this. My rule of thumb, just for me personally, my rule of thumb is I will do about half a gallon of water a day to a gallon of water, okay? It really just depends on the day. It depends on my activities, right? So for example, if I know that I'm gonna work out that day, I'm gonna have more than the normal amount that I have. Here's the thing, because I'm a nursing mother, and I said this earlier, because I'm a nursing mother, I need to actually take in a lot more water than what I used to take in before because of the fact that I need to increase my volume, right? And drinking plenty of water is not only good for my system, but it's actually good for uh, breast milk production. So if you are actually nursing, this is really good for you because making sure that you're hydrated is one of the key components to making sure that you have a good and even supply of breast milk for your baby. So I don't think a lot of people know that. So I just really wanted to punch that line in there because if you don't know that, then it is what it is. Now you know that, right? So ideally when you know better, you do better. I didn't know that. Yeah, I just thought, oh, well, water is supposed to be good for you, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, well, Rose, if you needed it when you were pregnant, what makes you think you don't need it when you're nursing? So, you know, that's the rule of thumb. If you can't have it when you were pregnant, you can't have it when you're nursing. The only stipulation I will make to that is alcohol. And let me explain why. Don't click off the video. Don't click off the video. Let me explain why. The reason why I say that in particular is because there is this notion that because you're breastfeeding, you can't drink. That's not true. The rule of thumb is to be smart about it. If you are breastfeeding, and let's say for example, you're gonna go out with the girls, this is the first time you're getting out, you wanna have a little drink, you wanna have a good time, you're trying to turn up a little bit, there's nothing wrong with that. Here's the thing, before you go out and you turn up with the girls, okay, make sure that you pump before you go. And also, there's like an extra stipulation of that, so you gotta make sure you listen, okay? So when you pump before you go, you're making sure that you have the good breast milk enough for the baby you don't want to make sure have alcohol in your system and then come back home and pump because then you're giving that to your baby and like what's what's the purpose in doing that you're trying to get your baby drunk so they can pass out i mean that might not be such a bad idea now that i think about it that's not the goal here you want to make sure that you pump before you go out and you drink but you also want to make sure that you pump enough so you may have to plan this a little bit ahead of time that for about 24 to 48 hours after you take in the alcohol, you still wanna make sure that you have enough milk that you pumped previously because you wanna make sure that alcohol works its way out of your system before you go back to breastfeeding, right? So if you're trying to go out and you're trying to really turn up, you might need to take that entire 48 hour window and not actually nurse. So I say 24 to 48 hours because it is contingent upon how much alcohol you drink. Now, if you have something like a beer, maybe even two beers, that may not be a big uh because depending on the type of beer, that's roughly about 5% alcohol per volume. And like a beer or two in a regular size can, I mean, what? that's not like a whole lot. You know what I mean? I don't want to say use common sense because a lot of people don't have common sense. But I do want to say that if you are unsure, the power of Google compels you, okay? Do the best you can to go onto some websites and really do the research for yourself. But not just like these little fruit for websites, but really go on websites that are credible um, that, you know, actually have some like medical journals or have something like that, that can give you some actual information. If you're not sure, then if you're still a little bit like, eh, you can always, always, always contact your doctor, some sort of, um, you know, or health specialist, someone that can give you that 
appropriate information so that way you're not looking crazy. People are always going to tell you that it's better that you don't drink alcohol, but I don't really believe in that necessarily because I do believe that everything is okay in moderation. But if you choose not to drink alcohol at all the entire time that you're pregnant, the entire time that you're nursing, that's acceptable too. But you know what? I, I, I gotta say, I haven't really, I haven't necessarily heard anything bad about somebody having a glass of wine every now and again, or a beer here and there, you know, but I just wouldn't suggest that every weekend when you're nursing, you're out here like just doing shots. You know, I wouldn't recommend that. Don't just go by what I say, because like I said, I'm not a medical professional at all. I'm just telling you from my personal experience and what um, the research that I've done. So that's pretty much what that is. Oh, baby's crying. Gotta go. But that is pretty much what I have for you guys today to kind of give you guys some ideas about not just foods that are great for you, but maybe like some meal ideas and some snack ideas that you can incorporate in your daily regimen that might help you while you're nursing your newborn. And keep in mind that these are all healthy foods, so you cannot go wrong with it. And you can't go, this is not literally just for mothers who are nursing, but this is for anybody. If you want to eat healthy, take these ideas, apply them, and then come back to this video and let me know how it worked out for you. While you're here, feel free to review some of the other videos on my channel. And if you like this video, smash the thumbs up and share it out with your friends and fam. This really helps me out on YouTube. I share lots of cool content every week, so in order to get the goods, please subscribe by hitting that red subscribe button below and the bell icon to be notified whenever I post a new video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.